you for thank you papa for gathering us thank you for making it possible for us to come thank you lord for your abundant care and if the life oh, thank you, we, we are not taking it for granted you, some you will come us here. they are no more but we still yeah. here we still attended among the living <laughs> papa it's only by your grace we just want to say thank you, Father. We just want to say thank you, Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your mighty hand of protection over our life, over our family, over you are our the children. One God, oh Lord, and you whose presence praise will come to receive. You are worthy of adoration. But we just want to say thank oh Lord, you. That as we have it's a moment of fellowship that we are going to spend in your presence. To so you be all the glory, to you be all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. For some reason, we have lost Sister Coco. I'm not sure what happened there. Let's just give her a few seconds to, to get reconnected. How about that? Amen. Amen. Uh, other people connected when I was logged out or they have to get back in? No, no, they're fine. Everyone can easily log in so we can um, begin. Okay, all right. As a custom for us at the well, we are going to take our communion. We are going to partake into the body and the blood of Jesus. And... Uh, we want to use the scripture found in the book of Luke, Luke 22, verse 17 to 20. Sister Christine, can you uh, pull that up, please? Yes, I'm doing so right now. Luke 17, right? Sorry, no, 22. 22 okay. from 17. To twenty. Is the NIV version okay? Yeah, that's fine. From a seventeen to twenty. Amen. Amen. And after. All right. He said, after taking the cup, he gave thanks. Take this and divide among you. For I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Amen. Now Amen. we are going to remember. I would like each one of us to remember the revelation you have about the body of Christ, your personal revelation about the body of Christ. I want you to remember that and praise Jesus for dying at the cross of Calvary on your behalf. If you remember that his body was broken for you to be forgiven, go ahead and praise him for the forgiveness of your sin. If uh, you remember that his body was broken for you to become daughter of the Mosai or son of the Mosai today, go ahead and worship him and praise him for what he did for you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the sacrifice your son did for me at the cross of Calvary. 
he took my place. Me, that was, was full of sin. Jesus, that knew no sin, took my place and died at the cross so that I can come boldly in your presence. His body was broken for my body to be made whole. He received a crown of thorn so that me, I can receive a crown of glory. Father, I thank you for the sacrifice your son did. When you say, who can go? He's the only one that say, I will, I will go. And he came and he died for us. Oh, the sin that I've committed, my family have committed, the whole world have committed, Jesus paid for our sin. If he's Father, I just want to say thank you. Papa, I just want to bless your name for allowing your son to intercede for us with his body. Jesus, I crown you king over my head, over my family, because of the price you pay with your body. Your body that was flogged. Your body that suffered what I am supposed to suffer. Jesus, I just want to say thank you. I want to bless your name and give you all the glory. Amen. Let us partake into the bread. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 In verse 20 says, in the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of, this is the cup, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Amen. We are going to thank Jesus for his blood that was shed, the blood of the new covenant. Amen. Where we were supposed, we sinners, we that didn't know him. We were supposed to go to hell, but his share, his, his, his blood, the blood of the new covenant, the new relationship we have with him now. Before we didn't know him, but because of his blood, you and I can come now boldly into the holiest of holy, into the throne of grace and speak to our father because Jesus shed his blood. We are going to worship him tonight. And thank, thank him for that precious blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The blood of the new covenant where the enemy cannot just come and do whatever he wants to do with us like he used to. But because of this blood, he will know that we don't belong to him no more. Let us pray and thank Jesus for this precious blood. Hallelujah. Amen. So I thank you for the blood you have shed for me. The blood of the new covenant. This blood that gave me new identity. The blood that was shed for me to come bodily before the throne of grace and obtain mercy. I thank you for the blood of protection. Jesus, I thank you for this blood of healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for your powerful blood. You done you no know, sin. But you became sin for us so that we may become the righteousness of God. Thank you for your blood that made us righteous before the Father. Thank you, Jesus, for this blood of reconciliation. Yes, it's through this reconciliation that we made, we have the covenant, the new covenant. Hallelujah. Jesus, I thank you. I bless you, man. I lift your name. I thank you for this blood that speak in our favor in any aspect of our life. We bless you. We honor you. We give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us partake into the blood. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, you are welcome again at the well. Today, I have the privilege to share with you what the Lord has put on my heart for some time now. 
I would like us to talk about the, a prayer of intercession. Amen. Amen. Intercession done to act or interpose on the behalf of someone in difficulty or in trouble, as by pleading or petition. It also means to attempt to reconcile differences between two parties or two people. It means also to mediate men. You know, there are many kind of uh, prayers, but uh, today I want to talk about intercessory prayers, something that we can be practicing in our life also. Uh, why? do we need to intercede? Why do we have to pray for others? Why do we have to pray for nations? Or just forget about ourselves and bring someone else's issue before the Lord. Number one is because the Bible says so. In 1 Timothy 2 verse one, Mr. Christian, can you pull that up? First Timothy, no, yeah, First Timothy two and one. Amen. He said here, I urge then first of all that petition prayers. Intercession and thanksgiving be made for all people. Amen. The Bible is asking us to pray. First, to pray, make petition, intercede, and thank God for all people. Hallelujah. And uh, we can see that Jesus is the is our number one intercessors. He's the one that pray for us most of the time. And he has done that throughout the New Testament. And um, I tried, but I did not find where Jesus was praying for us before coming on the earth. But I believe he has been interceding for us before coming. When the father asked who will go and he said yes. I believe he has already been interceding for us before he came on earth. If um, we look at Isaiah 53, in the Old Testament, Isaiah 53 verse 12. I didn't have, uh, I've never had the opportunity to read the whole chapter of uh, Isaiah 53, but this time I did. And what really stood out to me at this time is uh, the verse 12 that said, therefore I will give him a portion among the great and he will divide the spoil with the strong because he poured out his life unto death and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. You see how Jesus paid for our sin. He does supposed to be to have a portion among the great. He has it already, but uh, he came and he that divided the spoil of the strong. He came and poured out his life unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressor for he bore the sin of many. He bore our sin and he made intercession for the transgressor. So he has been willing. Even if I don't have proof, I believe he has been interceding for us before even coming on the earth. But we can see that the Bible shows us in, in Luke 23,
verse 34. Luke 23, verse 34. Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting the Lord. That was at the cross. Even at the cross, Jesus was still interceding for us. And that's what he has been doing throughout his ministry on the earth. He prayed for his disciples. He prayed for the soul he's going to meet daddy. He prayed for us. So... Jesus is our whole model when it comes to intercession. He even did the same for Paul in Luke 22. Luke 22, verse 31 and 32. He prayed for Simon, I mean, he prayed for Simon Peter, not Paul, he prayed for Simon Peter. Where he said, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to save all, all of you as sweet, as sweet, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brother, your brothers. Amen. Jesus has been interceding for us. He did for his disciples. That's the case of Simon here. Before he goes to the cross, Simon was the one saying no. He's not going to allow this. He even went ahead and cut someone's ear and all of those. But uh, Jesus said, he prayed for him. Because if you look at verse 31, Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny three times that you know me. So Jesus was praying for his faith. Jesus was praying for him to be strengthened for what himself Jesus was about to go through. So Jesus did really intercede for us. And we see that the Bible tell, tell us too that the Holy Spirit intercede for us as well. We can find that in Romans 8, verse 26 and 27. We, a lot of us are familiar with that, Romans 8, 26, 27. When we say praying in tongues, when we pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit is the one interceding for us. See, in the same way, the Spirit help us in our weakness because sometimes we don't know how to pray. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he, he who search our heart knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Amen. Most of the time, even if you call yourself intercessor and you want to pray, maybe you have a list of requests you want to pray about. Yes, sometimes you exhaust that list or you don't even know what to pray. But when you pray in the spirit, it's the Holy Spirit himself that intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. Because he is the one that knows the will of God for the moment. That's why sometimes I say when you think you just have someone's image come to your mind or someone just, you just thought about someone. It's good to just pray for the person, not just pray any kind of prayer, any regular prayer. Pray in the spirit. You never know why the Lord is putting that person's face in your spirit. You don't know why the Lord would like uh, you to hear from that person or something, but you are not even in the position of calling. Just pray in the spirit. You never know why you are praying for. Amen. Again, we are going to see that the Lord is looking for intercessors. Ezekiel 22, verse 30 to 31. Ezekiel 22, 
Verse 30 and 31. Verse 30 and 31. Amen. He said, I look for someone among them who will build up the wall and stand before me in the gap on behalf of the land so I will not have to destroy it. But I find no one. So I will pour out my wrath on them and consume them with my fiery anger, bringing down on their own heads all they have done, declares the sovereign God. Hallelujah. Amen. Brothers and sisters, uh, we need to understand the power of a prayer of intercession. Over here, we see that the Lord is looking for intercessors. The law wants to destroy the city. They want to destroy these people because they have sinned. We know how much we sin on this earth, especially this end time. We know how much people are falling out of the faith. And the law is looking for intercessor. Then he did not find. And he said he will destroy these people. And what the law say? The law will do. Unless someone stand in the gap. Because he said he's looking for someone to stand in the gap for these people. Amen. Let us also look at Isaiah 62, verse 6 to 7. Isaiah 62. Okay. Verse 6 and 7. Man. But here the Lord is saying, I have posted watchmen on walls, on your walls, Jerusalem. They will never be silent day or night. You who call on the Lord, give yourself no rest and give him no rest till he establishes Jerusalem and make her praise of the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So the Lord himself has established watchmen on the wall of Jerusalem. It means it is important for Jerusalem to have watchmen. It is important for the body of Christ to have watchmen. And these watchmen will never be silent day or night. They will not give God rest till God establish Jerusalem. It means he will, they will never give God rest till God answer their prayer. So when we are talking about interceding for others, praying for others, it means we are, or you the intercessor, you are supposed to be praying like the person in trouble. I remember very well, Mama Midway has taught us to intercede us, not just intercede for. If we understand the meaning between intercede for and intercede us, we'll, understand, we'll see that intercede for is like you helping the person in prayer. But if you are interceding us, you are taking the place of that person that cannot even pray or know how to pray. But uh, it's not doing the way it's supposed to. So you are going to stand as that person. Like the same way Jesus died at the cross of Calvary for us as if he was, he was the sinner, but he would, has never sinned. We are the sinners, but Jesus took our place. Jesus did intercede as us. He prayed as us. He took the punishment as us. So that's how we're supposed to pray for people. That's how we're supposed to intercede. Take their place. Someone is sick. Pray as if you are the one feeling that pain in your body. Someone's marriage is, about, uh, is having issue and you never know when the divorce is going to come. You are going to pray as if it's your own marriage. That's why in uh, fellowship, when we gather in churches and they say, someone give a request and they say, pray. 
most of the time we don't pray the way it's supposed to because we are not the one going through the problem. But let me tell you, there is a reward for an intercessor. You forget about yourself and stand in prayer for someone. Stand in prayer as the person that is going through trouble, the Lord will not forget about you. The world will surely reward you for praying for the person, for praying as that person in trouble, for taking the person's burden as if it was your own. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe I am making a point and that will help us. Yes, you are. Thank you. Amen. And uh, I ask only one question and we continue to answer that question tonight. Why do we intercede? We intercede because uh, intercessory prayer works. Amen? Amen. We are going to see the case of uh, Peter in prison in the book of Acts, Acts 12, verse 5 to 11. Do you want me to read? Yes. Read? The Holy Spirit is five asking. To, <laughs> five to five. 11. Yes, please. Okay. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Erod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrist. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. And the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that the angel was doing what he had no idea what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself. They went, they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the jewish people were hoping would happen amen amen hallelujah amen. something that caught my attention in verse five is uh, the church was earnestly praying for god for him amen earnestly amen. fervently with their whole heart they wanted Peter to be released. They wanted the Lord to do something because they cannot do it their own. And they know how these people, I mean, uh, Herod and his people wanted to destroy the early church because they don't know what they were doing. So the church was interceding as Peter. What happened? A night before they brought him on trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries uh, stood guard at the entrance suddenly. Because we don't know when, but if we persevere in that prayer, an angel of the Lord appeared and a light shone in the cell. I was asking myself, if nobody was praying, what was going to happen? He was going to go on trial the next day. And we don't know if they are going to let him go or they're going to kill him right there. But because the church was earnestly praying for, to God for him, the Lord's miracle took place. And the, the angel set him free and brought to him because even if he was set free, from the chain. He couldn't come out of the cell. He could not come out of uh, the prison. He still needed the help of the angel because people have prayed earnestly, fervently. So the angel took him out 
It means when we are praying, like the Bible say in um, uh, Isaiah 62, we should pray day and night. We should not take a rest. We should not give God rest till we see the answer to that prayer. That's what happened here. When the church prayed for Peter, the angel of the Lord came and set him free and brought him even before the door of the place where people were praying. If you continue for this uh, reading, that's what you will see. Let us look at Matthew to 18 verse 20. Matthew 18 verse 20 is giving us for where two or three gather in a name there there am I wait for there two or three gather in my name there am I with them amen amen we are used to the version that say when two or three are gathered in the name of the Lord there I am in their midst. Yes, when two or three, when we come talking about intercessors, intercession sometimes, most of the time when you are two or three, it's even better. When one person pray fervently, yes, the Lord answered. But what about two or three? What about four? I usually get to that say, uh, one put down 1,000 and two will put down 2,000. I, I don't know what kind of formula is that, but I believe it works. And if we add this word of God that is saying, when two or three are gathered in my name, I am in the midst of them. It means when two or three call upon Jesus, Jesus come and whatever they will say, Jesus will make it to come to pass. Amen. Amen. So intercession is good when it's done by multitude. Not many, but you know that many is already two. One is one, but two is already many. Amen. So I wish uh, we can understand something especially when the law is saying when two or three are gathered, that wonderful things can happen. Amen. Amen. When I'm saying that the intercessory prayer works, we are going to see a lot of examples in the Bible. I want us to remember Daniel. Daniel 9, verse 16 to 19 is telling us something over there how Daniel has interceded for his people, how he pleaded with the Lord to forgive Jerusalem and its people, not for their righteousness, but for his own name's sake. Daniel 9, 16 to 19. Okay. Lord, in keeping with all your righteous acts, turn away your anger and your wrath from Jerusalem, your city, your holy hill, our sins and the iniquity, iniquities of, ours, of our ancestors have made Jerusalem and your people an object of scorn to all those around us. Now, our God, hear the prayers and petitions of your servant. For your sake, Lord, look with favor on your desolate sanctuary give ear our god and hear open your eyes and see the desolation of the city that bears your name we do not make requests of you because we are righteous but because of your great mercy lord listen lord forgive lord hear and act for your sake my god do not delay because your city and your people bear your name amen amen and we see how he pleaded with God. He was interesting to, for his people. And he said, Father, for your name's sake, not for our righteousness, but for your own name's sake. So when we are praying, doing the prayer of intercession, we have to know the right word to use in the circumstance in which we are praying. 
Amen. For the situation we are praying. But here he is asking for the Lord's mercy upon the children of uh, Israel again. He's asking the Lord, Father, he understands we have sinned, but please forgive Jerusalem. He's pleading with the Lord. Say, Lord, listen, hear, act for your sake, my God. Do not delay because your city and your people bear your name. Amen. We also have the example of Nehemiah. The whole chapter of Nehemiah will tell us how Nehemiah is a great intercessor for the children of Israel. And he interceded for the wall of Jerusalem to be rebuilt. And doing so, he did it in action and then in prayer. I hope we study the book of uh, Jeremiah in our own uh, time. We have also the example of Esther. Esther, when they were in a foreign land, we see how uh, Mr. Heman wanted to give a Mordecai for something he didn't even do just because uh, Mordecai didn't want to bow before him. So he plotted things against Mordecai. But with the prayer of intercession, Esther was able to walk into the court of the king when he, she was not called. They fasted. We can see that when you are doing intercession, we can even fast for someone else. I don't remember the last time I have fasted for someone. And I've done it before. I don't remember the time I've done it last, but it's a great tool. It's a great weapon of intercession. Fasting as someone that cannot fast. I've heard a man of God saying that he was married and the children were not coming. And another man of God was the one praying and interceding and fasting for them till the wife got pregnant. So, it's possible for someone to intercede in fasting the same way uh, the people of Israel did in the time of Nehemiah, the same way they did for it in the time of Queen Esther. Amen. If we look at uh, Genesis 18, verse 23 to 33, that one too is going to be uh, long to read, but if you take a note and you read it later on your own time, Genesis 18, 23 to 33, even to chapter 19, Abraham was interceding for Lot in Sodom and Gomorrah, where the city have seen, that's where we heard that the first, uh, I don't know if they were the first, but we, it, most surely was rampant in that city and the Lord wanted to destroy that city. But uh, the cousin or the nephew of Abraham was in that area. So Abraham was praying. Abraham was praying with the Lord, going back and forth, the Lord, are you going to destroy everybody in that city? Lord, please, if you find 50 righteous people in the city, why will you, will you destroy them more? The Lord said, no, I will spare the whole place for the sake of 50 righteous. Abraham came back and said, hey Lord, if you find 45, are you going to destroy them? The Lord said, no, if I find 45, yes, I'm not going to destroy them. He came back and said, what about 40? The Lord said, 40 is enough. I'm not going to destroy them. And he knows that maybe the numbers is given the Lord may not even find. He went and he continued to reduce in 30, 20, and 10. The Lord said, even if I find 10 people, I will not destroy the city. But I don't believe there were even 10 people, righteous people in that city. So the Lord, uh, let's look at uh, Genesis nineteen sixteen. Let's look at that one. That's how we will see when Abraham continued Pleading till the time has come for the angel of the Lord to destroy this, the place. And this is seen. Okay, when he hesitated, the man grabs his hand and the hand of his wife, 
and of his two daughters and led them safely out of the city for the Lord was merciful unto them. My version was talking about uh, Abraham there because Abraham has prayed. Uh, do you have a uh, King James there? Can you get King James? Nineteen sixteen, King James. Okay, should I read? Yes, please. When when he re when he hesitated, the man the men gra grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and his two daughters and led them safely out of the city for the Lord was merciful to them. Amen. Amen. When I was uh, planning, studying this, I found another version to, that said clearly, maybe amplified, that because of Abraham's prayer, I saw it very clearly here. Yeah. When you will be reading one day, you find it for yourself. Say because of Abraham's pleading. That's why the Lord saved Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Amen. And before he destroyed this city. Also, we see that in Exodus 32, verse 31 and 32. Exodus 32, 31, 32, Moses interceded for the children of Israel out of Egypt on their way to Cana when they rebelled against God and made their own golden calf. Did, did you see Exodus 31? No, 32. Verse 31 and 32. So Moses went back to the Lord and said, oh, what, is, what a great sin these people have committed. They have made themselves gods of gold. But now please forgive their sin. But if not, then blow me out of the book you have written. Amen. We see how Moses was asking the Lord to forgive the sinners and he even said, but now please forgive them. But if not, then blot me out of the book you have written. Wow. What a courage. For the Lord to blot his name out of the book he has written and save the multitude of sinners. Yes, Moses did intercede for them. And I believe not all of them were destroyed that day. Some people's lives were spared. Amen. Amen. You see that intercessory prayer to work. Another question that I would like us to answer, those questions are the question you may have, someone that didn't know much about intercessory prayer. What makes an, an intercessory prayer work? First, we have unity. Second, we have one accord. And third, we have agreement. We know that before we pray for us to have answer, we must have faith. So it's because of our faith in the Lord that we are praying to God through Jesus. Amen. But the other thing that an intercessory uh, prayer request is the unity. When you are in a group of intercessors, when you are two or three, that God you want to pray, you want to stand as someone. You must be, you must be unified. You must have one accord. You must be in agreement. Amen. First Corinthians 1.10 is talking about uh, unity. First Corinthians 1.10. It reads, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another in what you say, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly united in mind and thought. Amen. Amen. That is something we need to understand. 
understand the kingdom of darkness is very united. But the kingdom of God that we think we are part of, we are not as united as the kingdom of darkness. People or human being or whatever that belong to Satan, they respect their Satan. They go, they do according to what Satan tells them. But we children of God, we are not united the way we're supposed to. Because the enemy knows that if we are united, we can do wonders. So that unity is very important when it comes to interceding in a group. It's very, very important. If we, the Bible say, a house that is divided cannot stand. So if the two people or three people that gather to pray are not united, they are not, they don't, they are not in one accord, they don't have agreement, it will not work. But as so long as that unity exists, they will do wonders. Philippians 2.2 2 is saying, make my joy complete by being of same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, and tend on one purpose. That's Paul talking to the Philippians. That for them to make his joy complete, he want them to have the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, and intent on one purpose. Amen. Matthew 18, 19. The New Living Translation say, I also tell you, I also tell you this: if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my father in heaven will do it for you. Hallelujah. And we know that our father honor his word more than his name. So if we are in agreement, we have one accord and you are united and we want to pray according to anything, the Lord will answer. We, we should not forget that he said he's looking for intercessors. He's looking for people to stand in the gap. He's looking for people to be watchmen on the wall of the body of Christ, to be on the wall of the life of our loved one, to be on the walls of Jerusalem. The Lord is looking for people to come and plead on the behalf of others. And who can do that is only the children of God. Amen. That's why he has put it on my heart. It has been the only thing I've been talking about without knowing that is something that a lot of people need to hear and to put it into practice. Amen. As intercessors, we need to intercede for authorities of the country where we live, the community where we live. Jeremiah 29 verse 7 say, but seek the welfare of the city where I've sent to you into Ezra and pray the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will find your welfare. Amen. 2 Timothy 2.2 2 also say, for kings, pray for kings, and for all that in authority, that we may lead a quiet, peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Why is the Bible telling us to do that? Because the authorities, the kings, they are the ones that make the law. And we want the law that they are making not to go against our children of God. We want those laws to be in our favor, to be in the favor of our children. I don't know if you have noticed. On, uh, I work in school and in the health room, I've seen some of our forms don't have where it's written male or female no more. And in uh, middle school and high school, the bathroom is for anybody these days. Especially the one in the health room. It's not like it's for men, uh, boys separately and girls separately. So have we been praying enough and we still see those things? Have we been interceding for our government official to make decent laws so that we can have a quiet and peaceable life. 
in all godliness and honesty. And when intercessors pray, especially for the government, for the officials, for the authority, you will see that corruption will decrease. You will see that injustice will decrease. There's so many things that we see in the justice system will go down and we will live in peace on the earth. Amen. Amen. My question is, are we interceding for the body of Christ? As if we say we are intercessors, are we interceding for the body of Christ? We need to intercede for the body of Christ because many heresies are preached in the body of Christ. That's what Paul is asking in Ephesians 6. 19 and 20. Pray also for me that whenever I speak, word may be given to me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel. For which I am an ambassador in chain, that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. We really need to pray for our spiritual leaders. We need to pray for families, we need to pray for marriages, because the marriages of the children of God are on trials these days. Marriages are so fought by the enemy. I don't know in, about your community, but literally I have heard a lot of couples uh, have divorced in my community. A lot, many. And this is what the Lord has put on my heart for this year, to pray for marriages. I was praying before I even heard that a lot of marriages uh, are broken in my community. As children of God, it's good that we stand on the behalf of others. We stand as them in prayer and pray for them, especially praying for souls, which is the heartbeat of our Father. Jesus did not die in vain. He did not shed his blood in vain. He shed his blood so that many souls shall be saved. But if we read the Bible very well, I don't think one third of us are going to make it for the rapture. Are we doing the right thing? Have we tried that? If you have never tried, the two or three that the Lord is talking about is you and your wife, or is you and your child, or is you and your sister, is you and your brother. Be in agreement, be united, be in one accord, and pray for the soul, and pray for the body of men, pray for the families, pray for the children. Especially in the time as this, only prayer and studying of the word of God can help us. Amen. Amen. That is why the Lord has put on my heart that we need to be praying as little groups. Not just for this time, but uh, if we know we are in the end time and if the trumpets were uh, to sound today, the one that are going to remain, do they know what to do? Are they going to run again to the church or they have small groups and they should know where to gather and pray again? Amen. That's what I brought for the throne of the throne room of grace for you tonight. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Mm. What a word. What a word. Thank you so much. Wow. I've been blessed. And I'm sure we've all been blessed. Thank you, Sister Coco. We're Thanks. going to jump right into, um, you know, feedback, comments, questions. And I can start. My, my takeaway tonight, I remember 
you know, we were in Luke 22 and this was Jesus speaking to Simon and he said, Simon, 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 Satan has asked to sift all of you as we, but I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back and when you've turned back, strengthen your brothers. Clearly, Simon, Jesus was able to see that he will indeed fall short, right? And he spoke with confidence. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. So tonight I understand that, you know, interceding, you're not, I'm not always going to intercede for, for um, people or souls or family member that haven't done anything who haven't sinned because we're all sinners, right? I shouldn't hold that against someone. Well, you know, the, the, the reckoning that's coming your way, you've deserved it. No, I should really go before the Lord, trusting that and praying that they can turn away from said sin or turn away from whatever it is that they got into. Amen. And interceding, trusting that when they get back up, they can do the same for the next person. Amen. Amen. Um, that's, that's my big takeaway because one can turn into two, two can turn into three. And yeah. again, the father cares about, you know, the oh. souls of his children. Mm -hmm. And I should not hold any contention. Whatever it is that anyone did, that is not, if they brought it upon themselves, that is not enough reason to keep me from, from standing in the gap because that wasn't enough to keep Jesus from dying on the cross for us, for our relationship with the Father, amen. This amen. was such a great word. I have been so blessed and, I, and I'm grateful for your time spent with the, the Lord. Amen. So the floor is open. I know you guys are just rushing, just jumping over each other, wanting to share feedback. So go ahead. I don't mind calling names. Please call names. <laughs> no, no, Dred, you'll be going first. I mean, I've been so blessed and uh, I don't know what not to talk about. I'm sorry about the background noise. But thank you so much, Sister Coco, for throwing so much light on and emphasizing on this aspect of intercession. I wrote down every scripture in my Bible, not even in my book, because I need to go back and look at them very closely. I just enjoy the spirit with which you brought this message, most especially. So it went right into my heart, and uh, it's something I need to take more seriously when it, when it comes to interceding for other people. Because what touched me most was when you highlighted the fact that Jesus Christ was the first intercessor and you showed us from scripture how he interceded for us you know on multiple accounts you know prior to coming here while he was here while on the cross he interceded for us so i mean we want to be like him and it's something we need to take very seriously it's an aspect of prayer which i think most often is delegated to a select few if i may say you know, they call them prayer warriors, intercess intercessors. But tonight you've just made us understand that intercession is for everybody. Everyone needs to intercede. So that is what is very important um, to, to, to take back with us so that we make it a lifestyle. That way we are not always transferring our responsibilities to other people, but we can also carry other people's responsibilities and uh, carry them through diligently. So thank you so much. Thank you. May the Lord replenish you for doing for blessing us tonight. Amen. 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 Going down the list. Any comments, feedback, Sister Erica, Benaspa, Brother Armel. 
Brother Kingsley, any feedback, any takeaways? Yes, I'm going to go. Thank you. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, I was so blessed. So this message is more like a sweet melody in my ear. It's so sound. You know, the Bible says that the entrance of the word of God brings light and understanding to the sinful. There was so much understanding here. And it is true that intercession is not it's not for a specific group of people because growing up, I mean, in the church where I grew up, there was this intercession group. So it was for a specific people. So I used to think that intercession was, I don't know, I don't, to this point, I don't know if it is a gift. That's what I used to think. But today, I think that I understood even before today that intercession is for everybody from the time we did a fast when mother midra said we, we um it was organized to pray for the um the ministers and things like that so we were all interceding on their behalf so from that point i got the understanding that intercession is for everybody um miss coco threw more light on that aspect today i'm grateful for that praise god and then also um putting my thoughts together so um also um she mentioned that there is power in agreement because the bible says when two or three are gathered in my name i am in their midst and also the bible says that can two work except they agree so we already know that straightforward talking about agreement in everything that we do, anything, be it prayer or whatsoever. Of course, a house divided by itself cannot stand. All of that, they tie together. You need to agree in everything that you do, most especially in prayers. Families are pray together, stay together, you know, all those things that we say. It is true. It is the word of God. And... um. And also she mentioned that when, when the Lord brings, like when you see and then a, a random, you know, image of a person comes to your mind, it's not happening for nothing. It's the Lord doing it. And it is true that we should inter intercede when things like that happen because it's, it's happened to, I think, everybody. But it doesn't really occur to us that, you know what, this is where you step into prayer or anything like that. You just say, oh, I thought of this person today. Maybe let me call them. You call and then you, you just you laugh and nobody prays them. And then that was it. So I thought of you today, so I just wanted to call you. But it's going to be more, you know, effective or better if we, um, maybe not even, you don't necessarily have to call, but you just go into prayers. That stood out, stood out to me. Because I sit and think about people randomly. And sometimes I just see somebody in my dream for, for no good reason. So I don't I don't exactly pray for them. I just wonder why. I'm like, Lord, why why is this person in my dream? I don't I don't tell them that I dream about them or anything. And sometimes I don't do anything about it. But I've been I've been brought to, I mean, it's been it's been brought to my understanding that I need to to pray. It's the Lord, you know, saying something in another way. Not necessarily the whole picture, but just maybe vaguely. So you just go into prayers for for whatever reason. If you do not know how what to pray about, it's best to pray in tongues because in tongues, you know how tongues covers a whole scale of whatever is going on. And if you do not speak in tongues, the Bible says that you should desire to speak in tongues and you will. We are all children of God, we're filled with the Holy Spirit. We can speak in tongues if we desire to. On to the next, which is um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, that's all for now. That's all I remember. Thank you. Praise God. Amen. 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 To give an example of uh, someone thinking about the other person and pray, I heard a story of a woman and um. Uh, she just missed her son and um, she prayed for her son. 
And later on, the son called her and said, Mom, at this time specific, we, me and my friend, were arrested in the bush and someone was about to kill us. It was mom's intercessory prayer that kept them alive. So from then, since I heard that, uh, sometimes we don't know our gifts. My mom and my sister, when someone is coming to their mind, the person is going to die within a week or a month. So when they have recognized that, anytime someone comes to their mind, they start praying. They say, Lord, I don't want to receive any bad news about this person. I cover them with the blood of Jesus. It's a gift, but they, don't, they didn't know how to use it. These days they have understood. And um, now that my mom has uh, have understood that, what she does is she will try hard to find you and talk with you and pray with you. Some people get very upset. But she said she does not care. She will just go ahead and do what she's supposed to do. You don't know how the Lord can use us. It's very good to pay attention to our gift and uh, what the Lord put in us. It's all is for the education of the church. It's not for us to glorify ourselves about it. It's for the edification of the church. Amen. 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 Any more comments? Any feedback, takeaways? Amen. I just want to say thank you so much, um, Mr. Coco, for such an awesome, such a profound um, message delivered with the greatest simplicity, such that it brings great joy to the hearts of the hearers. I just pray that we will put what we have learned today in practice. Let's put it into practice because there is a blessing for those who practice what they have heard. Now, this is such a reminder to me that I am not living an aspect of my Christianity. Because if Christ is the one whom we look up to as our example, and because of that, we go, we carry ourselves around as Christians, then we really want to pay attention to how Christ lived his life and also model our lives after that so that it will be befitting to refer to us as Christians. Now, as you were preaching, what came to mind, first of all, was the baptism of Jesus Christ. Christ came on earth with no sin. He knew no sin. And he went to someone who was baptizing people a baptism of repentance. You know, he was baptized, John the Baptist was baptizing everyone a baptism of repentance. Why? Because we needed a baptism of repentance. But Christ did not need a baptism of repentance. But to begin his intercessory journey here on earth. He baptized a baptism of intercession because repentance was not his portion. Christ baptized a baptism of, uh, of, of intercession, an intercessory baptism so that he could 
take upon himself the repentance that we needed and started his journey right there. So it just brought me to a place where I just felt like, you know, Christ could go that far because it was at that point where he set aside his, his, uh, um, his son of godness per se and took upon himself son of man. You know, and after he had done that with the understanding of what he would have to go to deal with in order to accomplish that task, the father said of him, you know, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You know, because he stood to intercede for the rest of humanity once and for all. That was a very powerful understanding that I got as you were sharing this word. Then it just led me to John 17. In John 17, the entire chapter, Christ just spent the time, you know, bringing to God's remembrance his relationship with God. And I mean, telling God of the glory that he and God, the father had before the world was made, which tells us that he was reminding the father of him being the son of God. And then he talked how he came on earth, became the son of man and lived with man, everyone that God had given him he worked with them and now he is coming back to the father, you know, coming back to the father where he will leave sons of men back here on the earth. And he was praying that they will be in the world, but they will not be of the world. And he was praying that they will have unity, you know, unity like the kind of unity that he as son of God has with the father and the Holy Spirit, that the son of man may be one like that. Now being one like that is one of the things that will show that we recognize the fact that Christ came to the world, you know, because he says that they may be one so that the world may know that thou hast sent me. You know, so it just made me look at that uh, intercession again and just rekindled my desire to do intercession even more and more. If we look at the life of Christ throughout, he lived a life of prayer. So he was always representing his intercessory role here on earth. So we too, if we say prayer should be more of a lifestyle, we can live that lifestyle. We have an opportunity on this platform without any apologies. One of the big assignments that we have is for the restoration of the dignity of the African-American. You know, so, if we continue to have that on our minds and we are praying every day for that restoration, it is not just going to be the restoration of African-Americans. It's going to be restoration of Africa and Africa diaspora mm -hmm. because Africans are found all over the world. Africans have been in slavery for 2,800 years. That is seven times 400 years. So our people are everywhere. And you know, one of the big projects that we have is interceding you know, as African-Americans interceding for African-Americans, which is why we go to Virginia annually. So mm -hmm. we have that opportunity. 
to just you know keep narrowing down and interceding and interceding. And it leads me to remind us that every now and then, just you know, rob yourself of some sleep on Friday night mm -hmm. and join us at 11 p.m. as we pray, you know, for this course, for the restoration of the dignity of the African American. That is an intercessory assignment that it's, it's kind of a selfless assignment because you are not seeing the restoration of African-Americans, then I will become African-American. You will not, <laughs> you know? So it is similar to the kind of, you know, selfless intercessory life that Christ lived. So guys, if you can make it, Friday night, 11 p.m. I'm looking forward to start using this same Zoom link this coming Friday. So I'll just Amen. communicate with the other team so that we use the Zoom link from 11 p.m. and just intercede. So Amen. Sister Coco, thank you very, very much. And please, I pray that we have received this message. Amen. We have received this message. It's not by chance that we are listening to this message. You know, most of the times, I mean, we are products of selfless gifts. You know, Christ was given to us as a gift. We are Christians. We receive that free gift. He suffered and died for us. And all we have to do is, I acknowledge your suffering and your death. So when you too, you put yourself out there to sacrifice you know, for others, what you make happen for them, the father makes happen for you, yes. you know, beyond your wildest expectations. So may we be encouraged to you know, be intercessors wherever we find ourselves. Thank you so much, Minister Koko. God bless you. Amen. I wanted to add that if uh, you are seeking for marriage, I wish you can forget about yourself and just pray for marriages and pray for young people to be married the godly way. If you are in the need of children, don't come before the Lord and cry, Lord, I need children, I need children. Just pray for all the marriages that need children. By the time you go to one baby shower to the other, people will come to your own baby shower as well. Because what I have noticed by doing intercession, I've learned to forget about my own issue. And then I just find that my problem has been resolved and I don't know how. Amen. Amen. So, even though I have never suffered, I have never gone to immigration to apply for documents in this country, I take it very seriously to pray for people that don't have papers in this country. It is, we have a lot of requests we can pray about for other people, standing as them before the Lord. We have a lot, a lot. I pray that the Lord will give you a request, even in your family, in your neighborhood. Afghanistan is one right now. The sick, they are our prayer requests these days. So we have a lot to pray about. And your prayer life will, be, will never be the same again if you try intercessory prayer. Amen. 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 Yeah. Thank you, Coco. Thank you so very much. Those that have ears, let them hear. Okay. We've heard. Okay, so we've come to the end of our session. Mama Mildred, are you available to close us out tonight? And then we can share the grace.
if you if she's if you're not available daddy k can you close us out in prayer tonight please absolutely thank you let us pray our father my god we say thank you thank you lord for this message on intercession and intercessory prayer that we know that as your word has been delivered at this time there is need for us to pay attention because we will see why we have to intercede in the days ahead and if we don't do that then we'll go around another cycle to get back to a place where we'll have to learn how to intercede for and as others so our Father and our God, we say thank you because you have brought this to us and we'll take it seriously and run with it so that every lesson on intercession that we need to learn at this time will be learned and will practice and it shall become a part of us. Our Father, we thank you for the many examples from Genesis through revelation, oh God, that you demonstrate to us how your children of old interceded based on the situations that they faced. So Lord, we pray that because these examples are so many, may we, Lord, begin to look at them and see invitation to partake to participate in intercessions or intercessory prayers for others with similar situations or other situations that need intercessory prayers. That we submit to you that we do not know how to pray. We submit to you, Lord, that we do not even know Sometimes when we receive dreams and visions, we don't fully understand how we should pray for these people that we see in our dreams. But Lord, we just receive the grace for you from you tonight. That when we wear this suit as, intercess as intercessors, that you would pass through, oh God, and reach the people concerned at the various times as the need arises. Lord, we also pray for unity of the body that will come together as two or three and pray so that we'll be able, oh Father, to move the mountains as necessary. Help us also, Lord, to intercede for the government of the land where we find ourselves. May we, Lord, be intercede and pray for the administration fervently, O oh Father, so that the things that you desire to have done in this season will be done regardless of who is in office. Father, we just bless you tonight. We say thank you for your daughter through whom you brought this word. Thank you, Father, for her submission even to receive from you and bring this to us. Thank you for all, O oh God, who have participated in receiving the word. We trust in you, God, that we shall also be doers of this word so that your name will be magnified. Daddy, we just bless you until we meet again. We say thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Share the grace, Amen. The grace of our Lord. Right. Love of God. Holy Spirit. And Good night, brothers and sisters. God bless you all. Good night. Good night.